Welcome to day six of 30 GIMP tutorials. And today we are going to explore and learn how to create your channel art or banner for your YouTube channel. And yes, I have a free template you can use to design your artwork. So let's dive in and get started. So this entire canvas represents the TV banner size of your artwork. The dashed lines represent the three other sizes for your banner. So the top and the bottom dashed lines represents the height of your banner for all three devices. This inner rectangle right here represented by these vertical lines represents the desktop minimum plus mobile size of your artwork for your banner. These outer vertical lines will expand the size of your banner based on viewing on a tablet. Desktop max is the full width of our canvas from left to right. The one size I would recommend placing all your main elements into is the desktop minimum plus mobile. And that's because the majority of your viewers are going to see this size of a banner. So when you begin designing your banner artwork, I recommend keeping this dashed outlines grouped layer above everything else so you can see these dashed lines. So I have a design here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like. So now I'd like to show you how I created this design and I'm gonna give you some additional tips for creating your banner art for your YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some images here. So I have three images that I'm going to use. I'm gonna select all three and click and drag them over my canvas and then they will be added into GIMP as new layers. I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange these because I want these in a specific order. I'm gonna grab this one, click and drag it up to the top, and then this one above that one. And I also need to resize these images as well. So I'm gonna grab my first image here. I'm gonna grab my scale tool with Shift plus S. You can also grab that from the toolbar. And I want to set the height of the image to match the height of the template, which is 1440 pixels. Because I have this turned on or linked together, when I hit the tab key, it's going to automatically adjust the width of the image and keep it in proportion with the original. I'm gonna go ahead and click here and drag over here to the right. And then once I click scale, it will resize the image. I'm gonna grab my move tool with the letter M. I'm gonna click on the image layer here on my canvas and use my up and down arrow keys to move the image into position so it's perfectly aligned top to bottom. So my next image here, I need to rotate and I can do that by going up to layer, transform and selecting rotate 90 degrees. And I'm actually gonna click on this image and just move it over to the right just a little bit more. So right about there. And I'm able to do that even though I had a different layer selected in the layers panel because in the tool options I have pick a layer or guide which will allow you to click on a layer on your canvas and then you can move that layer as needed. All right, so I wanna create a grouped layer for these images. So I'm gonna click on this top layer here to select it. And then I'm gonna click on this icon here to create a new layer group. And because I had this layer selected, it places that layer group above it. So now to add these images into the layer group, I'm gonna click and drag it until I see that outline. And once I release, it's placed inside of that group. We know it's in that group as well because it's indented, this thumbnail is indented versus the other thumbnails or the other previews. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag these up into the group as well. I'm gonna click on this layer again and I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm just gonna call it fill and I wanna make sure that I fill it with the foreground color which is currently set to black. Now at this point we can't see any of the images other than this black layer here. So the other thing I need to do in order to see the contents in this group and to have the blending modes that I'm going to apply pass through the group to blend in with the background, I need to change the layer mode 
for the layer group itself. So instead of normal, I'm going to select pass through, which will allow the contents to pass through the group layer and then blend with the background layer. Now it's not working yet because these layers are all set to the normal blending mode. So I'm going to go ahead and begin changing the blending modes of these layers. So for the first one, I'm going to choose linear burn. And this image should actually be outside of the group. So I'm going to click and drag it out of the group. I'm going to select this one here and I'm going to change the mode to Luma Lighten only. And then this one I'm going to change to difference. All right, so we can't really see the contents yet. And that's because the layer group is set to 100% opacity. And once I drop that down, you will then see the contents within pass through the group and each layer is blending together with the one below it, including the background layer. Now I want to show more of this background image. So I'm going to cut this top image from this top left corner at an angle down here to the right. So I'm going to grab my image here. I'm going to grab my pass tool to create the shape that I want to cut out of it. And I can grab my pass tool with the letter B. So I'm going to come up here and click right here. And that leaves a node or an anchor point. And then when I come back down here where I want the angle to be and click, it's going to add another node and then connect those two with a path. Now, if you don't have the angle that you want, you can actually click on this node or this one up here and reposition it. So I think I'm going to bring this over to the right just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue on the outside of the image. And then I need to close out the path by holding down my control key and clicking on this node. Now, I don't want to cut out the pixels permanently. I want to work non-destructively. And I can do that by adding a layer mask by clicking right here, selecting white and clicking add. So nothing has happened yet. And that's because I need to go into the tool options here and click on fill path. And because I have my foreground color set to black, when I click fill, it's going to remove that part of the image. How cool is that? So if you take a look at my layer mask here, we can see white and black. So white adds, black removes. And we can see this large white area here represents the image that we can see and the black represents the image that was just cut out. Now, I did forget to mention that if you want to practice what you're learning right now, all three of these images can be downloaded for free. So find a link in the description below that will take you to an article that I wrote explaining some of these steps in more detail and there will be links to download the images. So the last thing to do is to add some text and I'm using Montserrat Bold for this design and I'm going to use this color white here for the text and I'm just going to type out something like channel art design or something like that. So right now my text layer is very hard to see and that's because the text was placed inside of this group underneath the fill layer here. And that's because my last selected layer before applying the text was this one here. And as soon as you begin typing something in, it's going to create that new text layer above the last selected layer. So I need to click and drag this out of the group above everything else to see it. And it looks like I misspelled channel. So I'm going to go ahead and click inside and add another N. And then with my move tool, I'm going to go ahead and move this up into position right there. I'm going to come back over here with my text tool. I just press the letter T to get it. And I'm going to resize my next text to 100. And I'm going to type out art design. It might be a little bit too large still. So I'm going to double click here and then type in 75. And once I click my tab key, it's going to resize it. Now with my move tool, I'm going to go ahead and move this into position right there. With my text tool again, I can come over here and make adjustments to my font and my size if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and type in railway here. 
So I can choose a new font and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller at 50. I'm going to hit my escape key so I can deactivate the text tool. And then with the letter M, I can grab my move tool to reposition the text. Now check out that video right there to your left. It's going to show you how to improve your click through rate with killer YouTube thumbnail designs. It's going to be awesome. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.